Welcome to the Voice of Russia live bridge with our London headquarters, our Washington headquarters, and here in Moscow. My name is Miguel Francis, and joining me is Kirill Razlagov to discuss this uh, new activism wave that has been happening in Russia, but the most recent one, the recent action of the radical Russian artist Peter Pavlensky, who nailed his scrotum to the cobblestone on Moscow's central Red Square. Spread a real controversy in Russia, and uh, I guess we're going we're gonna to discuss this today. So Pavlensky himself, Pavlensky to be correct, himself who was disappointed by his quick release from police custody after brief medical treatment, views his doings as an artistic act and uh, an act of activism. Um, how's your view on this, Kirill? Well, uh, he's right if he thinks so, because whatever the artist th- thinks about what he's doing, it uh, has to be true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Could <laughs> have be Marina so. Abramovich who does it all the time. <laughs> Right. Now, he said that by his action, he wanted to express his protest against the police state, quote unquote, that does not allow him to walk naked on the Red Square and uh, imposes other limitations as well. Uh, in his explanations, Polensky sticks to professional terms, describing his testicles as a visual code. Uh, he says that I had to do this in order to have the discussion about freedom started, uh, Polensky stated. Uh, how is this, you know, and, and this is an interesting thing that's been happening in Russia for some time now, that uh, uh, at, at least according to some activists that I read from all over the world, that they don't really agree that this is the right way to protest, you know, by exposing yourself. And we've seen this with Pussy Riot, of course, and, you know, groups like that. Um, do you think that this is uh, a way to actually protest? and get somewhere, or is this just a senseless exhibition of your private parts? Oh, it, it depends on the situation. The situation is ru- in Russia is uh, quite specific, but it happens uh, everywhere all the time. One of the particularities of this situation is that uh, in modern culture, uh, culture is something very conservative. Culture doesn't like changes. Culture is, wants to stay as it is, and it's natural because culture is something, a link between uh, cultural communities. If the link changes all the time, life is impossible. And in art, there is this specific part which is called contemporary art in English and actualne iskustva. Uh, it's a difference from modern art in Russian, uh, which is the part of culture which wants changes. So it has to be shocking. It has to be against the cultural cultural life, cultural trends, cultural habits. Uh, it has to bother people and to ask questions. Of course, people don't like it, and uh, states don't like it, and uh, except some intellectuals, uh, most of the people are shocked by it. But it's the way to change culture, but it changes very slowly, and sometimes these people will be declared artists 100 years after, or will it be forgotten? We never know. Right. Well, to uh, come back to the uh, cultural, the, the uh, action aspect of this, the part of society which found time to discuss Mr. Pavlensky's action was badly split. Uh, the liberal intelligentsia, and uh, especially the professionals of the so-called actionism, uh, called Polensky's actions an artistic act of despair. Meanwhile, the majority of regular listeners of radio call-ins and television talk shows, which discussed the matter, refused to consider Mr. Polensky as an artist. Um, yes, the same thing was with, with Pussy Riot. You know, whatever, when, uh, uh, let's say, uh, there, there have been different kind of exhibitions in uh, in galleries and whatever, and uh, there is a tradition that the first moment is not accepted as art. Uh, in 50 years it becomes art, in 100 years it's either forgotten, becomes mm-hmm. great art. So, uh, um, Kirill, uh, you are the director of Russian Institute of Cultural Research. I was. I'm not not anymore. Uh-huh. I went the, I'm teaching now at the Film Institute. Uh-huh. So you would be a part of, well, it, it, would you be a part of the liberal, liberal I'm sorry, intelligentsia? <laughs> no, I, I'm a cultural scientist. That means mm-hmm. I analyze the situation. I explain how it works. I might not like it or I might like it, but it's not important. The importance is to understand how it functions, how this kind of art is related to culture and to society. Mm-hmm. 
Now, joining us in Washington is uh, Holly Bass, a, a writer, playwright, and poet, currently the Cullen Poet in Residence for A Bus Boys and Poets, Washington, D.C., where she coordinates open mic nights and writing workshops for the public. Uh, Holly, how are you? Hi, I'm doing very well. Thank you. <laughs> so what is your take on this uh, on this um, new trend of activism that we're seeing here in, in Russia? Well, first, Miguel, I also want to add that I am also a performance artist. So I was very struck by Mr. Pavlinsky's uh, work and also the, the work of Pussy Riot. Um, I think what's happening is that you get to a certain point, you have to have a radical reaction in order to provoke any sort of spontaneous response at all. And so the fact that we're here on the radio discussing it means that his action was in effect, it was effective. And if he had done something milder, we probably wouldn't be discussing it. So, you know, when you look at the current political situation in Russia, how how else can you respond to it when you have a country that would arrest, you know, a punk rock band for a, a pretty mild, um, you know, uh, response to the government and the church, how are artists supposed to respond? Well, it's an interesting view that artists uh, perhaps uh, have this this sort of a way of, of, of responding to political uh, limit, limitation or oppression that they might be experiencing. But uh, shouldn't uh, shouldn't activism and uh, and protests really come from uh, from a revolution of consciousness? Really, I mean, um, that's that's another thing. And to introduce another guest that we're having from our uh, London headquarters is uh, Louis uh, Caden, if I'm pronouncing that, that correctly, the director of Live Art Development Agency. Uh, Louis, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Um, so what is your take on the situation? Uh, well, rather boringly, I'm afraid I agree with the previous two uh, <laughs> uh, two speakers. Hello, Kirill. Hello, uh, hello, uh, Holly. Um, I, th I think that you know what uh peter pavlensky was 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 doing what we're talking about here is um is using artistic practice as a form of public protest um with the aim of drawing attention to issues and about um with the aim of provoking public debate and as holly points out here we are having a public debate um that possibly we wouldn't be having if um peter pavlensky's action hadn't been so um so visceral and so uh, provocative in all, in all kinds of ways. Uh, so I'm hugely supportive of his um, of his gesture. Uh, I also kind of think, just to take a little bit further, I think that uh, whether we whether we whether we you agree or not, all art is inherently political, um, and uh, within that can take uh, many different forms. And I think the kind of protest, uh, the forms of sort of uh, protest that we're we're looking at. Uh, that's that's taking place in Russia right now is a, a sort of form of uh, <clears throat> is protests that are taking part uh, taking place all over the world. There's a sort of new generation of artists, activists who are looking at sort of strategies of what they call creative resistance, i.e., using, using creativity uh, as a fo as a sort of form of political strategy to, as I say, sort of provoke debate and to contribute to to public discourse. Uh, and so artists are doing uh, are working in these ways all over the world, and it's particularly sort of heightened and particularly charged at the moment in Russia um, because of the conditions in which artists there are finding themselves and because of the kind of things that are happening in Russian society that artists feel that they have a, a public responsibility to speak out about. That's a very interesting view, Lois. Now, in re recent years, Russia became a field of experiments for all sorts of artistic performances, which uh, rightly or wrongly call themselves actionists and which say they carry a message to society. Now, the Pussy Riot group uh, staged a, its signing performance right near the altar of Russia's main church when the members of the group got arrested. Mr. Pavlensky uh, sued his uh, lips tight by line and needle in uh, order to express his support. And all kinds of artistic prizes and awards were uh, Pow pow um, powered, I'm sorry, on this kind of artist, uh, artists, and many observe, observers agree that the motivation for these prizes was a political one. Uh, this set of circumstances has led us to suggest the following groups of questions to our panelists. Is it really so? Did the uh, members of the actionist group uh, Voina deserve a state-sponsored prize 
for drawing a phallus on a uh, rising bridge right next to the headquarters of the Russian Security Service in St. Petersburg? And can such a drawing be called a visual code, or is it just a childish game? Or maybe it's a wicked game insulting society. So let's start with uh, Kirill. Uh, what, what do you think on, on this uh, issue here? They, they don't des deserve a state funding prize or award. It wasn't given, money wasn't given to them. Uh, but they deserve the applause they got because uh, a phallic symbol is a symbol forever. That means the, since the ancient times in uh, India, in, uh, in Europe, in America, wherever, uh, that's the symbol of procreation on the one hand and the symbol of, in the in the present times, it's a symbol of not accepting things and of, uh, okay, I don't, I won't use the full letter word, but uh, the relations between this phallic symbol and the KGB building, which was facing it, uh, mm -hmm. is a, a specific kind of relation. <laughs> interesting, interesting point. Let's that's, be polite about it. <laughs> that's a very interesting point indeed. Okay. Um, uh, and going on to London now, I'm actually to uh, Washington. I'm sorry, um, Holly. Um, have you? Uh, are you aware of the uh, this this action uh, uh, actionist group of Voina? Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about the state funding, and um, I'm only sort of cursorily uh, familiar with what's happening with uh, Russian art scene. But I think uh, just. Historically, art speaks to its moment and its context. And so what's happening in Russia and what's effective in Russia might not, for instance, be effective in London or in the United States. I think about the NEA4, um, which was, you know, a couple of decades ago and the uproar around state funding being given to American performance artists such as Karen Fenley. And now I think we can see the impact and importance of the kind of work those artists were doing. And I think, just as Kirill was saying, I think history is going to bear out what the Russian actionists are doing. And in terms of, you know, state funding, it's art is always subjective in terms of, you know, what people value. Um, I haven't seen the image, so I don't want to comment per se on that image. But I, I do find it interesting that we, you know, get our pennies in a bunch and have this uproar around something like a phallus. But then when we look at violence and repression and torture, which is really much more offensive, if we're talking about something being offensive, we are often comfortable and complacent in the face of that. So I think what these artists are doing is also highlighting those kinds of contradictions and dichotomies that we have in our contemporary society. That is a very interesting point, Molly. Yes, uh, perhaps so. And uh, what is the true value, value of art? You know, that's another question. Can this value be calculated by the number of internet clicks on an action's uh, video record or by the amount of money uh, received for an artwork sale? If we follow this logic, then Pavlensky's performance has a huge artistic value. And the best work of art is uh, Francis Bacon's painting Study of Freud, which has been sold on Monday at Sotheby's for $142 million, the highest price ever paid for a work of art at an auction. Um, how, you know, how, how artistic are these moves really? Uh, that, that's another question to look at. And, and do they carry a point with, with, uh, with such activism? Um, so, so far, as I understand, Louis uh, in London, Louis Kaiden, the director of Live Art Development Agency, you are very much in line with this uh, being an artistic statement and you, you do um, see it as, as a work of art while... Um, the fact that we're having a discussion about this is another thing that, it, that it's actually, you know, it's actually making, making waves. Um, lowest. Well, I think that the sort of question of um, cultural value is a huge one. And it's probably sort of one of the most important, significant uh, questions that, um, that needs to be asked, certainly in the sort of in the world of art and possibly in the sort of uh, in wider society, wider society as, as well. Um, and the value of a work, of course, cannot be um, reduced to its financial value uh, by any by any shape or, or form. And the value of work can also not be um, can also not be reduced to the number of people that engage with it. Um, I, as you put it, the number the number of internet clicks. Both of those things, I think, are sort of completely sort of distort um, the significance. Um, of, of of a work of art, you can't 
you know, simply look at at at, 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 uh, at numbers alone. We all know, you know, the famous story of you know. Up. Only a handful of people saw the first ever concert by the Sex Pistols, but of course that was, you know, one of the most significant concerts that's happened in the history of, in the history of um, of, of popular music. Some of the greatest novels have only been, you know, haven't been written, haven't been read uh, by that many people. Whereas, um, you know, the world's one of the world's most prolific uh, novelists, Barbara Cartland. I don't think we could necessarily say that she was one of the world's greatest, uh, one of the world's greatest authors. So those the kind of the numbers game, the quantitative um, game, I don't think is um, is useful really in, to- in, in in terms of talking about the va- the value of the value of a work of art. But questions of cultural value, as I said, are very incredibly incredibly sort of complex. Um, as who's ascribing cultural value? On what on what on what basis are they ascribing uh, cultural value? And what the kind of questions of of, of, of cult- cultural value? mean does that mean that this kind of work should be uh collected by the state or you know what 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 does the the wider question of 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 cultural value mean and i think it becomes increasingly difficult when you're looking when you're talking about performance art when you're talking about a form of art where the artist's body are their own material or as you quoted peter pavlensky saying where he describes his body as his visual code so when you're talking about ephemeral work that that isn't an object that isn't a score that isn't necessarily a thing but is more about an event or an experience then you, you, how you um place cultural value on it is incredibly complicated and you can't at the same time say it has no value because it can't be bought and sold or it has no value because it can't be it can't receive internet clicks so it's a difficult question it's a, it's a fantastic question but it's a very difficult question <laughs> well thank you thank you so much uh, lois and you know it's holly uh uh joining us in Washington here, mentioned uh, earlier that uh, certain protests and certain uh, works of art that, that uh, intend uh, some sort of protest, um, like in uh, Mr. Pavlensky's case, where uh, he did say that his action on the Red Square uh, was an expression of his protest against the police state that does not allow him to walk naked on the Red Square and imposes other limitations, uh, perhaps wouldn't work in other places. Um, uh, what is your view on that? Should you know? Th- 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 do these new protests? Do they really? Um, do they really uh, support the, uh, the 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 quote that I that I just mentioned by Belensky? What what actually um, would actually such such a such a protest or such a po- imposure of art uh, work in London per se? Uh, would that also show um, resistance to the you know powers that be? Well, I think in the. In the case of Pavlinsky, I actually thought it was quite strategically brilliant. As you said, he did do it on this uh, police day. And because he used a spike and, you know, nailed his scrotum to the cobblestones, he couldn't be easily removed. If he had just, you know, let's say if 15 or 20 people had walked out naked onto Red Square, the police would have just scooped them all up and quickly, you know, shuttled them into a van. But it caused this conundrum and people were standing around. If you see the video clip, they're sort of like, well, what do we do? I mean, we can't pick him up and actually, you know, cause him bodily injury. That wouldn't look good. So I actually think strategically it was quite brilliant. Um and I think some of his other work, you know, a lot of times when a, an artist like Bavlinsky, they do something that creates a media furor. Um, we forget that this is in context of a full career. He's actually gone to art school. He's done other works. You mentioned the piece where he uh, sewed his lips shut. If you see the images, they're quite striking. I mean, just aesthetically, visually. So there is, you know, there are times, I think, when action artists... Um, and I don't consider myself necessarily an action artist so much as a performance artist, but we do give concern to things like, you know, uh, visual and, and aesthetic qualities. But there are also times when it's more important to make the action and the statement and to get the word out. And I, I sort of would put this recent piece in that category. And I don't think it would be as effective, let's say, if someone went to, um, you know, Piccadilly Square or in, uh, in front of, you know, um, 
the castle in London or in front of the mall in Washington, D.C. naked and did the same thing, it wouldn't have the same impact because we're not in the same political context. And so you see artists uh, adapting to the, the time and place and situation in which they're living. Can I just come in on that slightly? Absolutely, context is all. And I agree that, um, that Peter Polemczewski's action was, was really smart, a really kind of clever piece of sort of interventionist art. And the other example I, I just wanted to, to give on that was the work of Femen, um, who are uh, f- f- feminist performance artists, and they use the strategy they, they also use is nudity. Um, and they do sort of public uh, public protests um, naked, but with sort of um, uh, with uh, slogans written on their bodies. And it's a similar uh, smart strategy because they know that the media wants to have young, pretty, naked women on the front pages of their newspapers. And so what, whatever Femin do is almost guaranteed to gain media uh, attention and media coverage um, be- be- just because of the, of the very way that they're doing it. They're presenting be- sort of bare-breasted women. And that is a strategy that can work in, in a wide range of different sort of socio-political contexts. And it's a strategy that's raising issues about feminism, but it's also uh, at the same time a sort of critique of the media. So it's, u- it's sort of uh, using the, the media uh, against the media, as it were. Uh, but again, it, it, comes down, it comes down to the context in which it's taken place. <laughs> That's a very interesting point. Uh, can you uh, like, I believe you'd like to uh, yeah. <laughs> comment on this. No, I would like to comment on several things. Uh, first of all, the value of a work of far there are two opposite positions. One was formulated by Ortega Gasset, who said that the future of the art is not a democratic kind of art. It's an art for connoisseurs, for artists. In this optic, the best work of art is a work on art understood by God and the author. If uh, the author's wife likes it, it's not as good. If a group of critics <laughs> around the artist like it, it's not as good. And the worst kind of work of art is a work of art liked by the, the clicks, the number of clicks. And on the other hand, we have a real situation now in the present culture. And one of my students at the Europe, Institute of European Cultures asked me frankly, is there another way of evaluate the quality of a film except box office? So for this generation, only box office, only the number of people who see, read something is a, a quality judgment. Uh, so this, between these two opposite views, one more traditional, the second one more modern, uh, everything is in between. And when I think about this, uh, the sense of naked bodies in uh, artistic ac- activism, I don't think that beautiful naked women with something written on them is a critique of the media. I think that is something that is done for the media, is experienced by the media, is liked by the public, and I don't see any critical impact in it, even if the the slogans are critical. So there is always an ambivalence in what's happening. Some of my colleagues would say that this uh, uh, action on the Red Square was just a result of uh, uh, self-advertising. Just the the, the main reason for it is to be seen on TV, to be discussed, and to become famous. Now he is much more famous than before this last action, because you know what he was done. He has done before. I know what he has done before because I am involved in cultural research and in art criticism. But the majority of people who discuss him on the internet haven't even heard of him, and now he is really famous, and it's the same the same category that this uh, prize paid for the Francis Bacon uh, artistic work. Of course, it's a reality that if it's, this sum is paid on an auction, that means that m- some people who decide think that it's a great work of art and it has a, fu- it, it has a future. Uh, not art critics, but people who have money who spend it on, on art. So 
in every case we have this ambivalence of different kind of judgments of different kind of understanding quality uh, but the most important th thing is that it becomes uh, a social event and this event is an event of protest against something even if i don't see a big square full of pub public where uh, people are allowed to go naked ex except after the october revolution when this was this movement of going naked in the streets and this movement which was expressly done with the new way of life that came with the revolution but it's an exception but it still happened in russia so perhaps it's a uh, it's it's a russian thing <laughs> you know <laughs> Um, well, uh, that was Kirill Razlagov, the former director of Russian Institute of Cultural Research and now also a professor uh, at, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you just mentioned it recently. Film, film, uh, it's now called the Film University. Film University. <laughs> Great. And uh, Holly Bass is a writer and playwright and poet joining us in Washington, currently the Cullen Poet in Residence for Bus Boys and Poets, where she coordinates open mic nights and writing workshops for the public. And our guest in London is Lois uh, Keaton, Director of Live Art Development Agency. Uh, I would like to thank you all for uh, the having this Russia, discussion Moscow with headquarters. With the um, and uh, we are discussing the actionism as art and what is art's true value, with the most recent uh, Russian artist being Peter Pavlensky, who nailed his scrotum to the cobblestone in Moscow Central Red Square. And uh, the last... Uh, um, interesting view that we had from uh, Kirill Razlagov, who is uh, here with us in Moscow, the, the ex-director of Russian Institute of Cultural Research, uh, kind of led me into this next question that I'd like to present to our uh, 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 guests in Washington, Holly Bass, the writer and playwright and poet, currently the Cullen Poet in Residence for Bus Boys and Poets, and uh, Louis Keaton, the director of Live Art Development Agency. Uh, can there be such a thing as uh, fake values in art? And uh, as you mentioned, Kirill, that uh, this recent uh, action by uh, Pavlensky uh, made him more famous than, than he was before, perhaps. And uh, uh, so can the carving for uh, publicity and the blind following of current political and social fashion uh, devalue a work of art, including the actionist art? Um, and uh, Lewis, I would like to uh, see if you have a view on this. Um, uh <clears throat> Again, it's a, it's, a, it's a tricky one. It all depends. Context is all and everything else um, that I always say before, before I kind of qualify any, any statement. Uh, I think it's sort of what you're also suggesting is sort of shock tactics uh, and whether artists who are using um, shock tactics, whether, the, whether, their, whether their practice has, um, has, a, has, a, has cultural value. Uh, or is just shock for shock's sake, and there's a sort of suggestion that that's what Peter Pavlensky is doing, which is something I really do contest. I don't think his work is just uh, shocking for sh for shock's sake. Um, but I think the the craving for publicity and this, as you talk about, this sort of blind following of uh, current political and social fashion, I think it's a really tricky one because it's sort of happening in a number of different directions. For a sort of area practice as performance art, which tends to have been sort of pretty much sort of marginalised from sort of mainstream culture for, for many years, seen, seen as this sort of poor relation that's happening in the, in the sidelines. Um, one of the very strange things that's happened with performance art recently is, is that it's been adopted by the mainstream in this in incredible um, and very sort of strange way. Um, so, for example, the latest um, uh, pop video by Jay-Z uh, which is a, a video for his single Picasso Baby. He's actually called it a performance art film. It was shot in Pace Gallery in New York City and it was filmed as a sort of homage to Marina Abramovich's work, The Artist is Present, which happens at the Museum of, uh, of Modern Art in New, in New York. And Jay-Z is sort of reenacting uh, Marina's performance work with Marina as a sort of guest star. Now, for me, this seems to be a very, very strange... Um, Way of a sort of multi-millionaire uh, pop artist um, approaching their own uh, their their own sort of practice, and it seems like it's an a sort of an appropriation uh, of uh, of the of the, the sort of the dissenting values of, of of performance art, and it's a way of sort of trying to suggest that the that um, 
that uh, they're possibly uh, more interesting <laughs> than they than they actually are. So this the sort of the question about sort of fake values in art. I, I'm I'm interested in it, but from from a very different direction from your question. I'm interested in what's happening when people like Lady Gaga, when people like Madonna, when people like Jay Z are appropriating radical experimental performance practices um, as a way of sort of increasing or improving their, uh, their, their kudos. That's a very interesting question indeed. Uh, well, Holly, um, in Washington, uh, our guest in Washington, what, what is your stance on this? Since um, uh, Lewis did mention most of American um, artists and you being an artist yourself, 